Okay, I think we're probably nearly ready to start. Um, can we be here? Can anyone hear us online? Uh, yeah, that's loud and clear. I'll take that as as confirmation that uh, that some that something's working somewhere. Okay, so um, so I'm Andrew Walker. You'll have heard me uh, burbling on this morning. Um, and thank you to coming, for coming to this uh, mini workshop um, on um, on making the most of your your teaching experience. Um, you've seen this slide. I'll not sit on it. Uh, the place I want to start was the um, the code of conduct for the meeting. In particular, uh, Lucia and Colin have uh, volunteered, I guess to present some, uh, or to give some short pieces of teaching, and we're going to be seeking feedback on this. So I really wanted to, be, to, to highlight the, uh, the third paragraph, starting to be kind to others. Um, I think it's really important if we're going to have people um, stand up and, and give presentations where we, which we're going to give some feedback on, that we, we give that feedback mindfully and, um, and thoughtfully. And, and you know, in, in the knowledge that the people who you're giving feedback on are going to see it and hear it. Um, so I think that was an important place to start. Um, okay, then the, the, the key thing that everyone needs to have is the, um, the notes document. Um, we're using the, the, the Google Doc that's been prepared by, by the, the organizers. Um, you can you know, point your mobile phone at this QR code um, if that's useful, or you can follow this link, or you can follow a link from the main document for the for the whole um, the whole workshop today, day two. So we'll bring these back up at the end of my introductory spiel, um, and you can you can follow those. But you will need will need that document, and you'll need links from that document. So what are we going to do? Um, we are going to, um, well, first of all, I'm going to, to talk for, for a few minutes, um, another seven minutes, in fact, uh, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about um, the Carpentries as an organization, but mostly around the pedagogical approaches we, we use and we train people to use um, to deliver short workshops on uh, essentially key, skill, key software skills. Um, and how, how feedback is important both for development of, of instructors and development of learners. Uh, we're then going to have the first of two demos. We're going to, have an, uh, we're going to take advantage of the fact that this is a, a hybrid conference. We're going to have an online demo of um, a particular part of a particular lesson. We're going to then find some, get some feedback of, of how that, that uh, lesson goes and, and how your experience of, of learning that environment. We'll then have a second, um, second short snippet of a lesson uh, here in the room. It'll be an in you know, it'll be as if it's an in-person workshop, slightly not quite like an in-person workshop, but like an in-person workshop. Um, and then we'll again we'll use a different technique to get feedback um, on that. And if you're if you're remote, you'll, you'll participate in that as well. And then afterwards, we want to to sort of wrap up and reflect on. Um, your experiences as learners and, in fact, instructors um, of the two environments and what, what works and what doesn't work, and try and come up with some, um, some shared experience, I guess. Can I just ask before we, before we jump, any, jump any further, how many people in this room? Uh, if I can get the participants up. Participants and of course my, I'm sharing my screen, so you can't see my participants. We have to go over there and show the participants. Uh, participants. How many of you are uh, have instructed uh, software carpentry workshops? A, so most of us know know something about this. I have completely lost control of Zoom as ever. Gosh, I hate Zoom. Right. Okay. There's a. Now that's entirely on the wrong page. Right, okay, good. As I say, I, I hate Zoom, um, which maybe is why I've not taught very much for the past few years. 
Right. So software carpentry workshops, as you will mostly be aware, are, um, to, are usually commonly um, aimed at more or less beginners. Um, they are typically two days. They involve various forms of active learning, in particular this, um, this participatory live coding approach where um, I or you as an instructor will show something happening and the students or learners will, um, will learn that at the same time in, as, we, as we go. I've now disconnected from Zoom. This is going to be a lot of fun. Okay, so the, uh, one, one of the really important things about this, this approach is that throughout we have, um, we have opportunities for feedback. We use that for the learners so that they can actually learn. Excellent, I've completely disconnected from Zoom. So they can actually learn. And, um, and secondly, um, yeah, this is difficult. Uh, <laughs> and secondly, it's a way to, um, to let uh, instructors improve as they, as they go. And I have completely disconnected from Zoom. So, sorry everybody, uh, this is going to be slightly awkward as I reconnect. Okay, so I said, I said these, um, this feedback was really important. One of the reasons feedback is important is because it's quite hard to learn if what you're doing is, uh, if you don't know whether what you're doing is right or not. Um, so, throughout any... Uh, any workshop, we, we have opportunities to, uh, for participants to, to essentially practice. Um, and as they practice, we tell them whether what they're doing is, is right. And we use, we, help, we use that to help them develop their understanding um, and learn from their mistakes. Um, and yeah, that looks great. Thank you. Okay, so hopefully you're now um, we can we're on on the same page again. Yep, I'm on. Yep. Yeah, just just hold on. Am I on the other network now? Oh, I'm on the other network. It's fine. Apparently. <laughs> okay. So um, so what else? What else do I want to say? It's supposed to be a friendly learning environment, and the instructors, as you mostly are aware, have gone through a level of training that actually is quite good. Right. Okay, what do I want to say about feedback? Um, I think I probably said this. Feedback's really important throughout the, um, throughout the, the workshop, both as a way to, uh, we, we use sticky notes a lot for, uh, for feedback. You can use them to, um, as a way to gauge how quickly people are going, whether people know answers to questions, um, and to collect feedback as we will uh, collect feedback on how the lesson itself went as we will as we will see. Um, okay, another thing that's important about feedback is it is it helps it helps us as instructors develop. Um, there's a few things to say about this. One is illustrating this cartoon um, that sometimes a single piece of negative feedback can be particularly impactful um in a in a negative way typically um and there are ways that we can use and which i've modeled already uh, today in dealing with this one of the things you can do is remind people about the code of conduct uh, you'll know this i've done that um, you can also ask the questions you want feedback on quite carefully and you can get uh, one of the things we, we do is teaching groups in pairs typically um, you can use uh, someone else to filter in effect the feedback summarize it uh, give you an overview without having to read all of the details yourself um, so you will if, if you manage to see any of the slides you will have seen some quotes throughout this comes from some of the the uh, well in fact most of most of what uh, is covered is in, in Greg Wilson's book and there's a set of, of 10 tips um, they are the quotes throughout, and there's some 
some other resources here that I'm aware that I've now gone over time, which is useful because I've also come to the end of the slideshow. Um, so this is what we're going to do. And these are the links that you, uh, you will need to find, uh, find the links and so on. So next we have, okay, so one, one of the things I want you to do as we run through the rest of the workshop is think about this last section, this wrap up and reflection. Try and think as well as any feedback you have about the individual contributions to the lessons. Think about some, something a bit more meta about the difference to the environment where the lessons are being presented. So one is online, one is in person. How is it different if you are in person or you are online, an online participant? How does the, you know, there's four axes here, where you are, where the teaching is coming from. Um, and try and think a little bit about how the different techniques work in those four different possible experiences that you will have. You will have two of. Um, but yeah, this is, so what we're going to move on to now is Colin, uh, no, sorry, Lucia, Lucia is going to give us a, uh, a 10 minute demo of a live coding, uh, of live, live participatory code workshop uh, in an online environment. So I'll stop sharing my screen and, uh, and I'll shut up. Right. Um, welcome everyone. And I will try to keep it nice and smoothly. And I know it's, this is somehow the weird environment because yes i'm online and there are other people joining online but many of you are all together in the same room so it may look a little bit weird but we're going to try to make the best of it and the first things that i need to do is to share my screen and making sure that we are all nice and ready and that i can still see you all because the second things i'm going to ask you is please if you can Keep if Zoom decide to collaborate. Uh, show video panel, here it is. So I will ask you if you can to keep your camera on. And this is very useful for whoever is teaching because it simulates much better being in a room and it will allow me to see how we're going. If I see the stare of death, the that we need a break face. It's much easier if there is a live stream. Of course, if your uh, Wi-Fi will not allow it or you don't feel comfortable with it, no peer pressure whatsoever, but it just make it easier from, uh, from my point of view. So um, I awfully been sharing my screen with uh, an RStudio interface. So the very first things we're going to do, we're going to try to see if our live feedback is working. So. On the bottom of your screen, you should see uh, a button that say, um, it's now disappeared from mine, that say reactions. And if you enter in the, if you enter in it, you should able to see uh, something that is a green tiki and is a yes, and something that is red and is a no. So we're gonna use this indicator as, um, as, as simulating the post data that we will see with Colin and are in the real world. So I've seen my helper already taking it. So the very first question I'm gonna ask you is, is the font in my shared R interface, R studio interface big enough? Press yes if yes and press no if you're struggling to read what is in there. Right. I see a series of green tiki coming out. I see two. No. Okay. So let's getting set in here. And if it will allow me to access, sorry, I just need to. Uh, I'm just trying to raise the, 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 the zoom bar was exactly on top of the bit that I needed to access. So tools, global option. So this is very useful for you too, if you need to set up on your machine. So again, you're going on the top bar, tool, global option. We'll open a page and we go on appearance and we see is now that zoom is set to 150. 
we can play around with it. I will put it a little bit bigger and the zoom will change the setting for the whole interface while the font size will only change the font in where you're coding. So depending on what you need, um, that will do. And I see a comment on the chat that say big enough but low resolution. It's weird. Normally zoom is quite good on, uh, on that. So let me see if uh, actually lowering this will increase in this will work. Okay, is the resolution a little bit better? That's smaller. I know because I changed the okay, let me go back and make it bigger altogether. Let's put 175 apply. Okay. Okay. Let's call it let's call it a win if this decided. Okay. Right. So here is our environment. It's currently empty. Um, it's currently empty. We need to start a new chapter and that's why it's completely empty. We have done all the cleaning. We have our data set now nice and ready. And now we're going to look at something a little bit nicer. We're going to look at how we can plot it. So as for the previous part, the first things we do, we start a new R script. So we go on this icon on the top left, new R script. And it's now empty. So as usual, it's really good to start commenting. So we are now looking at some nice plot. Okay, so we know what you're doing. And the very first things we need to do is we need to make sure that we have the library installed that we need. And we installed the tidyverse before. So in theory, if you mount the, so you you write library open bracket and we call the tidyverse that as we were saying before it's our collection of packages so basically if you need to do that analysis almost every package that you may need will be inside that um, we can run again as I, uh, we can either press run on the bar or you can control or command enter and that will run and no news a good news in R so I don't get any message anything underneath and this means that the tidyverse is correctly mounted if you had an issue if you by typing library tidyverse you get an error or anything like it it may very well be that you don't have the the packages that you need install and because the tidyverse is actually pretty big Let's not install the whole tidyverse. What we can do is installing the, installing the few packages that we actually need that are actually just install.packages. And as you see, like when you start typing, it will autocomplete for you. And we only need two packages. So we see, we open the bracket and we need ggplot that is our package for plotting and we need reader for reading our data so reader and i will just copy and paste this in the chat and can some of the L, one of the helper post it also on the on the shared document for those of you that are connected with two different um to the different machine to our studio and to the the zoom okay so we now have our library we need to import our data and it will in uh, in our in my case our data uh, only have one minute and we don't even import the data anyway let's just wrap it up we're just importing the data so um we are going to create a new object name survey and we need to tell the system where our data that we need to import are. So we need to use this read underscore CSV function that is within the reader. 
and then we need to tell software where it is. In my case, I have a data folder within which is the, the our survey underscore complete dot CSV. And in my case, it works the first way. And like, I will show you very, very briefly one trick if it doesn't. So if you go on the right interface, you see import data set. No, ignore the first one, go for the second one, identify, browse your computer to where your your um, your, uh, your data are, and do not press import. Do not press import, just focus on the bottom right corner. It will tell you which is the code that you need. So you can just cancel this and if I now copy and paste in here you see that we have exactly the same code we live coded together but by using this so your code will still be reproducible but if you really get stuck and you don't know where the file that you need to import have a look in there and just copy and paste out of it and I think that's the end of the 10 minutes we managed to go much further ahead than that when we demo so unfortunately we didn't really look at any nice graph but it's the is the joy of remote teaching not always go things go smoothly okay so thanks very much for that lucia uh, you, you've seen an example of teaching in an online environment. Um, the idea behind this short uh, teaching demonstration was not to actually teach you any R, it was to show you how um, online teaching looks like um, using Zoom um, or similar um, video conferencing tools. Uh, if you were following along with Lucia, you might have gotten some feedback from your computer, so from our studio. Um, so that's how learners get feedback, by typing commands and then the computer either says no or you get some output or some meaningful message from, hopefully meaningful message from, from your um, computer or whichever tool it is that you're, that you're using. Also, Lucia showed you how we are emulating the use of uh, green and red sticky notes in Zoom to gauge progress and to check how people are uh, doing. So you can use Zoom reactions for that. In um, in in-person workshops, we would we would typically use green and, and red sticky notes, like Andrew said, and we would just put them on um, on our laptops. Um, an instructor would ask whether people are following uh, or not, and we would put a red or green sticky note. So as a learner, you you would get some kind of a feedback either from your machine or maybe by uh, doing some exercises uh, which there are plenty of in Carpentry's workshops or perhaps by asking questions from um, of, of your instructors and your helpers. And now it's time to give some feedback to, um, to us as instructors. So what we are going to ask um, of you now is to do a little, little feedback for us. In online workshops, there are different ways how you can collect feedback. Uh, we are collecting feedback, again, like sticky notes, something positive, something negative in terms of both content and presentation. You can use any online tool for that, can be a shared Google document or a HackMD document, can be a little survey that you, you make um, using any tool. Uh, what we want to use now is Mentimeter to collect some feedback. So if we can have um, a link, yeah, there, you can see the um, the link to the Mentimeter, so it's menti.com, and then if you use the code that is being shown at the top of um, of the slide there, you can go and give us some, some feedback for the, this past um, teaching session. And it's also in the chat as well, if you're connected to um, the Zoom. Obviously, you don't have to use Mentimeter to collect feedback at your workshops. This is just one of the tools that we wanted to, to show you how you can um, quickly get feedback from, um, from your learners. So 
to think about something that went well and something that didn't go as well um, in this online teaching session and also think about content as well as presentation. Okay, thank you very much. So some nice feedback appeared there. I don't know if people, have people finished typing? And if you have, then you, you feel free to move on to the next question. So this is your opportunity to, to um, give us a, a red sticky, something that have gone better or something that we can improve for next time. And I think Andrew has pointed this out at, at the start. Some quite a lot of the issues with online teaching um, come come from the use of, of technology um, for video conferencing. Um, I think he's asked you to think about along those lines, what's, what's different in online um, from in person and what the difficulties and challenges are for, for each mode of teaching. So yes, this is just a demonstration of, of one teaching mode and one way to collect to collect quickly collect feedback from your uh, your participants. As I said, this is not the only way. Uh, there are many different ways to do that online. So with that, I'm going to hand over to Colin to show us um, how teaching works in person. Hear me okay? Can people online hear me okay? Is it still coming through the speaker? Okay. Right, so I'm going to do a little demonstration from the um, Unix shell lesson. Um, let's bring my notes closer. So the link for this, let me put that in the chat first. So the notes that I will be using is, I've lost it. There. The, the link of the notes. Ah, oh, brilliant. Thank you. Yes. So I'm going to be talking about um, using types and filters in the Unix shell. This is actually um, section four of the Unix shell lesson. So if you haven't done Unix before, I will give you a very quick recap. But first, let me click on my screen share. Um, there's too many windows open. So hopefully what you're now seeing is my Jupyter Lab screen. And um, if you want to follow along this lesson and you haven't got a Unix shell installed, you can actually go to the IP address that I've got up here, which is running an instance of a thing called Carpentries Offline that actually came out of a previous um, collaborations workshop. But essentially, this is actually a cloud server running a Jupyter notebook where you can get a terminal. So if you want to open a terminal here, you click on the big black terminal button and you get a terminal. Now, is that readable to people or is that text too small? I'm seeing a lot of shaking heads, so that looks like it's too small. If I click on settings, I can increase size. Let me do that a few times. Um, I don't 
increasing it by x negative x. Right. Is that now readable or is that still too small? That seems to have a lot of knobs. Good. Right. So hopefully that's now um, readable to you all. So just as a quick recap of what would have been covered so far in this lesson, we've got our Unix terminal here where we can type in commands. Instead of clicking things and clicking on icons and menus, we interact with this by typing in commands. And typically these commands have several parts. So the first part of the command, we type in the command we want to run. So for instance, wait, how come other people type in there? <laughs> Are we showing the same instance? I haven't tested this with multiple people, okay? So that isn't going to work for following along. Um, this is the benefit of mass testing. So if I type in the ls command, um, it will actually list all of the files that are in the current directory. Now, currently, this directory hasn't got any in. But we can also give some arguments to that, um, such as minus minus help or minus h. They do the same thing. That will tell it to give me some help. And we can also ask for operations to be performed on certain files. So for instance, if I do ls dot dot, it will list what's in the parent directory. We have also seen the cat command. The cat command shows us the contents of a file. We've seen the sort command that lets us sort the contents of a file line by line. We have seen the head and tail command that show us the first five or the last five lines of a file if we don't specify an argument, or we can override those and ask for any number of lines we like. We have also seen redirect. So redirect will, out, will redirect the output of one command into a file. If we do a single greater than symbol, the output of that file will be, that command will be sent to a file, and if the file already exists, it will be overwritten. If we do a double um, greater than, the file will be appended if it already exists. Now, there is some data that we need for this exercise. Just checking in the right directory, which we would normally have asked you to download at the start, but I haven't got it downloaded yet. So I'm going to use the wget command to download that. This is also linked to in the setup section of the document if you want to link it. And now if I run ls, we can see that we have downloaded the data. And then to get hold of the data, we do unzip shell. And we've got this magical thing in shell as well called tab complete. So I can type shell minus plus tab and it finishes off the rest of the command for me. So now I have all of my lesson data that is there. And if I was to now cd into shell lesson data, there are several directories that are in here that um, we can view some of the data from. And we're actually going to use some of the data from the North Pacific Gaia example. And one thing this lesson has is this lesson sets us um, a character who is a researcher who we're going to help through several stages of problems she's having. So this researcher is called Nell, and she's a researcher working on the North Pacific Gaia, and she's got a set of data from a machine reading the abundance of different proteins that were taken from samples of the water. And she has to run a script that processes each of these files. And she's got, I think, several hundred files. And it's very tedious for her to sit there and type the same command in for every single file and get her results. So we're trying to take her through lots of stages of how she can automate this process so she only has to type a few simple commands. And at the moment, what we're trying to do is to um, sort through a few things. So oh, I meant to have a file called length txt. I'm going to create a file called length txt. So if I run the command wc minus l star.txt, that will give me the length of each file in the number of lines. Minus l means lines. So the 300 there is the number of lines, and then that's the file name. And I'll actually repeat that. But this time I'm going to redirect it into a file called lengths.txt. Now I get nothing on screen, but if I cat length.txt, there is that same output that just came up on the screen. But now this is currently unsorted, and we notice there's one file in here that is actually short. It's only 240 bytes, all the rest are 300. That indicates that something went wrong with that reading, and that file is probably one we want to discard or at least look at in further detail. But because that's sort of in the middle of the list, imagine if this list was hundreds of things, it'd be quite hard to spot that. Whereas if we sort it, we can actually pull out those at the start. So if I sort minus n, or in numeric sort, length sort txt, 
it's now sorted them, and that is now at the top. But because I've still got a lot of things on the screen, I might want to filter that down a bit. So now I can do this vertical line, which is known as the pipe symbol. Well, on my keyboard, that is shift, and the character next to Z is also in the slash, but it varies around on a lot of different keyboards. And I'm going to pipe that to head minus N1. And what this is going to do is take that output of the sort command that was going to the screen and send it to the input of the head command. Now, before when we use the head command, we had a file name specified there. But when we don't put a file name in, it just reads from what we normally use a keyboard. But in this case, because there is no keyboard, the input actually comes from the sort program. So we've redirected that input to the sort program. And now if I run that, I just get that very first line showing up from there. And it's this that really makes the Unix shell very, very powerful. It's this ability to combine all these different commands together that do simple things into much more complicated processes. And these don't just necessarily get limited to two processes. We can do a third process. So now we can send the output of head to, actually, the output of head. We'll do the whole thing again without saving it to a file. So now if we do wc minus l star.txt, type to sort minus n, type to head minus n1, well, that will now run the wc command without having to save it in a file, then send that to sort, and then send that on to head which does exactly the same thing if I, no, not quite the same thing. I need to head minus n2 because it also shows the lengths file that I created before. So it's this that really makes the, um, the Unix command line very, very powerful. So in Nell's pipeline, we might not just want to check for two files, we might actually want to check for maybe five and actually adjust that number depending on the point at which we see the um, file lengths dropping beyond, okay, um, 300. We could also do this check that no files are too big. So we could sort, um, this time instead of piping to head, we pipe to tail minus n5, and we get the last five files in there. So we can just check that no files are coming in over 300 bytes because that would indicate that there's additional data in there that we weren't expecting. Now, one other thing I happened to notice going through that list is that most of these files end with a B or an A, and the, these were the identity of the machine that had done the analysis. But there's one file here which has a Z in it, which means they don't know which machine is doing the processing. So something else we might want um, Nell to be able to do is filter out all the files that don't end with an A or a B, or in this case, maybe end with a Z. So we can use the ls command to help with that. So we can do ls star capital Z dot txt. And if you remember from the previous section we did, star is called a wildcard character, and star matches any um, set of characters, including nothing, followed by whatever we put afterwards. So this will look for any file that ends with Z dot txt. And through that, we can find out that there are actually two files. So now we might want to move those files out of this directory or try to exclude them in some way from our analysis. Now, just to make my screen. There's a really good picture in the um, source notes explaining how pipes work that I always like to show off. So when we run a command on its own, we see that the output goes straight from the command to the shell. When we redirect, we have this blue example where the output is sent from the screen and then sent into a file. In a pipe, we send the output out and then it becomes the input of another program. So in this case, the WC command becomes the input to sort and then the output of sort becomes the input to head, and then the output of head goes out to the shell. And I just think that diagram sort of simplifies that and shows you very visually how that all happens. And I've been told I'm now out of time. So thank you for attending that very quick demo of Unix shell. As you may have noticed, there are a couple of things for example, sc screen sharing, font size that are similar between doing teaching in person and um, online. However, there are some differences as well. Uh, so what we are going to do now is we are going to
to do uh, another round of feedback for this second teaching session. So in the previous session, we used um, the um, sticky notes approach, which was anonymous. And in carpentry workshops, we typically ask for that kind of anonymous feedback after um, every half day of teaching. So after every session, which is approximately you know, half an hour, half a day of teaching, uh, we would ask people to give us this anonymous um, feedback using any, any mechanism of your choosing. So either asking people to, to, to write something on their sticky notes or using some online uh, shared document. What we are going to do now is we are going to collect feedback uh, using a mechanism that is called one up, one down. You may not have seen this mechanism uh, in carpentry workshops. We typically use this way of collecting feedback at, at the end of the workshop. Um, you might also have another uh, survey or feedback form for your participants to to uh, to fill in, but what one up one down is is this is a anonym, non anonymous way of collecting feedback where instructors go around the room and ask everyone to say just one thing. So you say either something that went well or something that did not go so well or, or could be in, could be improved. So I'm, while I'm explaining how this mechanism works, try to think in the, in the background what you're going to say, because I'm going to go around the room as well as calling the remote participants, and I'm going to ask you to say one thing in, which is either positive or negative, and it might not be fair towards the people who are starting first because they will have less time to think, and also it might, might be more difficult for people at the end because most of the feedback will be um, exhausted by the time we come uh, to the end of, of the room. Um, however, this is um, just to show you this type of feedback collection. So what we can do is we, we, might, we might call one person who is online and one person who is in the room. Hopefully uh, this will give, while I was talking, this have given you enough time to think about it. The reason why this feedback is collected uh, in Carpentry's workshop this way, is we try to um, get people's honest opinions. Once you exhaust all of the polite feedback, people are actually, um, in a way, uh, invited or maybe slightly even forced to say what they really think about. With this kind of feedback, instructors just collect and write it down. So what we will be doing is we will be the training team We'll be collecting this feedback by writing things down in our shared document. However, we won't respond to this feedback. With the sticky note feedback, we would typically try to respond. So for example, if you have a longer workshop and within the first half of the day, uh, the feedback you're getting is that the workshop is going too fast or it's going too slow, you, you can adjust while you're um, during the workshop, you can adjust the pace, or maybe if someone left you some feedback that you can address immediately, you would do so. The thing with the one up, one down feedback is this is for instructors to reflect, so we won't be providing uh, responses to that kind of feedback. Okay, so what questions people have about this type of feedback? Are people ready to go? Okay, Mario, do, do you want to call maybe someone from our re remote participants first? Lucia, can you give us one up, please? Something that went well. I think it was really good in explaining what each beat, like each command was doing. So that was definitely something that worked very well. And I'm very jealous that it managed to fit much more than I was able to in 10 minutes. Thank you very much. I'm just going to go to Lito. Uh, guys in the room, we lost sound. People, we are as online lost sound in the room. I was just saying that I think there could be more moments to check in with the audience to see if they're following along. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I'm trying to see everyone. Uh, 
liked the callback to what had been previously obviously done in, in the lesson. So reminding what the redirects were to files um, and then connecting that with the diagram at the end, I think has kind of brought things full circle. Thanks, Rita. Okay, thank you very much. One down, Steve, please, Steve Crouch. Um, well, for me, at least, I'm being a remote um, uh, participant. Uh, while mostly clear, um, there was, I think, one or two moments when the speaker's microphone was a little quiet at times. That's more infrastructure than anything. Okay, thank you very much. Do you mind just passing the microphone to Valerio, maybe? One up. One up. Um, well, I think I, I, I really enjoyed the lecture, so that was very clear. Um, I also particularly liked the way in which he explained pictures. That was particularly interesting. He went into details with that. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, one down, let's go for Sherman. Hello, Sherman speaking. Hello. Uh, one down. Um, uh, there was a section where the instructor was going through commands from the previous section. I would love to see um, demonstrating head or tail on the on the terminal, maybe it would just take one second or two, just very quickly, just to not just uh, say it, but just to show very quickly what we covered last lesson. Um, ho I hope that's fair. Thank you. Thanks very much. And can we have maybe one up from Luke as well, remotely? And then I think we can probably stop there. Uh, yeah, I thought it was kind of nicely put together in terms of making use of the material that was available and showing kind of the different aspects of the shell that you could get from just those collections of files and finding things out about them is quite interesting. Okay, thank you very much for that. I don't know if people are keen, we can carry on, <laughs> but I'm also cautious of time, so we do need to, to um, move on. Uh, oh, so there is a hand, Lucia, go ahead. Hi, sorry, just to add something that it's, uh, it's really not good to point, that is something, if you are gonna teach remote, it's going to take longer to do the same class. So if you are planning to teach, that's something that you need to keep in mind when you decide how to divide the different section. Like, don't, do, don't think that you will be able, I always do this mistake, mistake, do not think that you will be able to teach the same amount of thing that you will teach in person online, because it's not going to happen. Okay, thank you very much. So I'll just try and repeat that because we lost you there for a few seconds. So teaching remotely differs from teaching in person in the sense that you can, at least in, in one sense, that you, you can't cover as much as you can do in person. And you can, it takes longer to fix mistakes and, and errors. Okay, well, thank you very much for, for that. So we are going to now try and, and, and wrap up and have perhaps a little bit of a discussion about um, feedback, the importance of feedback uh, for both learners and, um, and instructors. So I'm going to hand over to Jeremy now, who is going to uh, take you through another round of feedback collection. And we are going to use Mentimeter again for that, just because we like it. Thank you very much, Alex. Okay, so we have another Mentimeter, um, I hesitate to say quiz uh, for you. Um, so if you go to the link that I've just put in the in the chat, uh, or you can use the code up the top there, menti.com, and then that code that's at the top. Uh, and I'll just give you a moment to all uh, get that page up. And while you're doing that, um, we're going to we're going to collect some feedback on here on the actual session itself. So this is general feedback that relates to both of the teaching demos that you've seen and any other comments related to the session itself. Um, I can see people are finding their way to the page. So uh, in view of time, I will just go on and say a few bits in terms of the the wrap up. So what have we looked at uh, this afternoon in this session? We've looked at some background um, from from Andrew at the start about the. Um, the general aspects of, of coding in the context of, of the training for carpentries, and I guess it probably relates to training more generally as well. We've then seen a couple of uh, demos. We saw a, a demo from Lucia with the, the online 
uh, instructor, and in fact, I think most of our, most of most of the participants here in person. We've got a few people online, um, and then uh, Colin's teaching um, here in person. So you've seen two different kind of modalities of teaching, and also some really useful thoughts and feedback from from everyone here in terms of those those two examples. Um, as I say, we're going to look at some sort of more general feedback upon the session now. So just to highlight that all the responses are anonymous. Um, be be honest, be constructive, but also obviously bear in mind uh, to be kind to the uh, in terms of the feedback that you provide. And we may use the responses in terms of writing up outputs from the session. Uh, but as I say, the, the material that's being collected is being collected in an anonymous manner. And this is really your chance to tell us what you thought was useful about this workshop um, and also things that you thought could be improved. So first thing to just get an idea of, I think we can probably we can probably see by looking at, at Zoom how many people we've got, but if you could just tell us how who here is in person online, uh, we will then use that to help us with one of the following questions where we can split the results based on uh, who was in person and who was online. So not most of the people here in person, but a few people there online. We'll just give you a, a few more seconds to respond to that. Is it? All oh, right. Okay. Are people are people having problems getting the page to load? Ah, oh, okay. It might be a um, yeah. Okay. Um, if you if it's not loading for you, if you try refreshing it, it should take you straight to the the page. Is anybody still waiting who hasn't had the chance to vote? You haven't. Okay. Um, it's not you're not you're not seeing the the page at all. Okay, well we will we'll add one to the to the in person <laughs> count. Um but we will move on to the next one and hopefully when, when you get connected you'll be able to pick up where we are. Um so we can see that most of our participants obviously are in person, but um before we go on to look at um your experiences, whether you're in person or online, just a question around uh, your experience of carpentries, whether you've been involved in carpentries in any of the following ways, and you should be able to select multiple options there. Um, I see we've got a lot of uh, experience here from the carpentry's perspective. Are people getting the, the, the quiz page up this time? If, if anybody's struggling to get it up, do let me, if they can't find the page coming up, I'll, I'll, I can try and reset the, the carpentry's, uh, try, try, try and reset the Mentimeter quiz, but if it's working, that's... Uh, are people online okay with this? Are you, get, are you getting the page coming up correctly? Yeah, looks good. Okay, great. Right, so that's great to see lots of people who've helped at workshops and instructed, and in fact also who've attended, which is fantastic. So um, that's really good to see. Um, so which mode of teaching did you prefer? So this is really down to a sort of personal preference. Did you think that the, the in-person or the online um, version worked better for you or did you have no preference at all? So it's interesting that um most of the most of the in person people preferred the in person delivery. And I think the the it's a shame we haven't got more online participants, but I suspect if you're online then online delivery is probably also a, a better modality. Um but uh, some interesting uh, Interesting results there. Okay, is anybody still waiting to vote who is keen to vote and hasn't had a chance? No? Okay, right, so we will move on. So now we've got a couple of options for you to give us some sort of freeform feedback. So, um, do, yes, sorry, that, that that's a very useful point there from, from Luke. If you're online, then both methods are online delivery. What I was referring to in the question was whether you preferred the, the demo that was given by an in-person uh, in, in person instructor in this room. But of course, uh, I take the point that the experience for you was probably quite similar if you were online um, in the two of them. But, um, in, right, okay, okay, that's probably a, that was probably a better way to interpret it. For, Right, but you prefer the principle. The, the, in principle, somebody on right. Okay, okay. So that's useful feedback for me because we could have worded the question better. So thank you. <laughs> um, okay, so some some uh, opportunity here to give us some feedback. Things you liked about today's session. 
<laughs> so I'll just give you a couple of minutes. I'm just keeping an eye on the time here. I know we've got to finish off very shortly. Um, Yeah, so a really good point about online teaching there. I think that it, you, you really can't underestimate the amount of additional effort that it takes to actually prepare and, and deliver the material. And I think lacking that kind of in-person feedback that you get from people sitting in front of you makes it much more difficult to judge the, uh, the, the pace of the people in the, in the room and so on. Uh, oh, what's going on here? Can I skip something in the sense that I've just dealt with? Yes. Oh, is it going to go? So let's go down a bit. Some great feedback here. Thank you, everybody, for just taking the time to, to provide your feedback. I'll just give you another kind of 10 seconds to provide any last comments on this, and then we will move on to the next one, which it will not surprise you to know is an opportunity to tell us things that you thought should, could have been improved in the session. And just uh, get the, the last... Uh, pieces of feedback that have come in here for the positive option. Great, so thank you everybody for, for filling that out. And as I say, now is your chance to tell us some things that you think um, could have been improved in terms of the session. And this is a, a general general thing, so this could relate to the, the demo, the teaching demos, or it could relate to the general session structure organization. So any any feedback that you'd like to give us of things that could have been improved, very very pleased to to hear. And I, I, it goes without saying, I think that uh, obviously um, this sort of feedback is very useful for us because it's probably it's useful for all of the team who organised this session because it's great to get some idea of how if we do these things in the future they can be improved. And I think uh, it's it's fairly unusual to have this kind of very split audience where we've got some people online and some people in in person. So it's really nice to. Um, to have the opportunity to see what people's uh, thoughts are on that. So, so lots of points here, I think, on all of the feedback we've had so far around the networking, um, which obviously is a bit of a challenge. And I guess it's relatively unusual for them to have a whole bunch of people sitting here who are all on Zoom talking to each other and other people who are all online. So that's, I guess, got something to do with the, the network challenges. but. Uh, I think certainly valid valid points. Um, and yeah, the, a useful point about the timing there. I think if we'd had a bit more time, we could have done some, we could have done a lot more, but obviously uh, to fit in with the, the session timing, we were limited unfortunately to one hour, but it's uh, definitely, I think, um, a good point that, that with more time, uh, it, it really does take a little bit more time to, to give a really good perspective on the, the teaching approaches. Um, Another useful point on the Q&A there, I think, as well, because I, I think we'd really like to have some, some discussion at the end of this. I think there's a lot of really useful feedback that we can get from the audience, and we're not going to have the time to do that, unfortunately. But I know that all of the, um, the team who've organized this session will be very happy to chat to you. So do come and talk to, to us uh, if you've got things that you, you want to feed back in terms of general comments or thoughts or ideas. Um, very welcome to come and chat to, to any of the people who've presented here. Um, and if the details, I think on the on the document, on the shared document, you've got the details of all of the, the team who have organised this. So do do feel free to come and speak to us. Um, do we have anything else? Yeah. So I think the the, the point there about the um, the in person again, I think that's probably limited lim down to limited time. But also, I I do feel that. Um, I guess the other challenge here is, of course, people were not actually, well, we, I assume some of you might have been following along, but I don't think everybody in the room was following along. And I think it's really difficult when you're teaching these kind of things to get an idea of how people who are actually doing the work are, are managing to follow along and the speed that you need to go at. I think this is a really big challenge for carpentries and for other similar training where there's a sort of practical element. So um, certainly something where I think very interested to hear feedback on people's experiences of that and uh, things that you think uh, can be done to improve the way that the instructor can gauge the progress of people both online and in person. Okay, so thank you again for, for all that feedback, some really, really useful feedback there. Now, I'm aware that it is now five o'clock, so um, there's one final slide which we'll leave 
here. And if you have any questions that you'd like to pose to us as the organizers, or indeed anything general about this, you're very welcome to add questions uh, in here as we as we finish off. Um, but with that, I will say thank you very much to certainly to our two um, de demo instructors. Thank you to Lucia and Colin for uh, volunteering and for, for taking the time to prepare and, and deliver that uh, those demos. So uh, thank you for the, for the instructors. Um, and indeed, thank you to, to Andrew for the introduction and to all of the organizers of the session for taking the time to, to put this together. And thank you to all of you for coming along and being so willing to give your feedback and uh, and being willing to be picked on by, by Alex for the, the one up, one down uh, feedback. It was really good to get to. <laughs> um, but no, it was really good to have the opportunity to, to get that feedback from you and to uh, have people engage with the session. So thank you all very much indeed. And uh, thanks for coming along. I hope you found it useful. So with that, we will uh, we will finish off, and um, I guess we're all heading back to the main room. Um, so, but as I say, do feel free to put any questions there if you want to. It will remain there for uh, a few minutes while we finish off here. <laughs>